What's up guys, Hybrid Mongoose here, and today I'm going to tell you why I love retro gaming. In a lot of ways, retro gaming is better than even modern gaming of today. Like graphics and new technology alone doesn't determine whether a game is good or not, at least in my opinion. When a game was released back in the day, it was either good or bad. Game devs back then only had one chance to really make the next big hit or the next big flop. I grew up during the console wars and everyone picked a side, everyone would talk on the playground like, are you a Nintendo kid, are you a Sega kid? And I seriously thought I was a Sega kid. Yo, he goes slow, he ain't no fool with that sonic speed, he just always cool. Sonic, Sonic the no fool. You know, one of my best friends growing up had a Genesis, and I would constantly play Genesis over his house. Uh, we would play, you know, the uncensored Mortal Kombat, where you could actually see the blood. Oh my god, and I was just like, yeah, you know, that this is it right here. This is the pinnacle of gaming. Um, so we begged our parents for a Genesis. Of course, we got a Super Nintendo instead. And no, I'm not joking. Wait a minute. This isn't my Sega Genesis. Disappointed! Although we were heartbroken at the time, we didn't realize how much of a blessing that was in disguise. Everyone knows the, you know, unlimited amount of just amazing games that were on the Super Nintendo. You have games like Killer Instinct, Chrono Trigger, Earthbound. I mean, I can keep going on and on and on. And Super Nintendo was really where I was introduced to, you know, JRPGs and RPGs in general. One of my favorite games and one of the best memories of my childhood was actually Super Mario Brothers RPG. It was a game that I got for my birthday and I will that game will forever hold a special place in my heart because of that. RPG Super Mario RPG Lord of playing a game the first video game memory that really knocked my socks off was the original Nintendo. Now, my dad actually had an Atari, and he showed us the Atari growing up, but when you're three or four years old and you're seeing Atari graphics, it's not really that amazing. And the controls are very clunky. You know, you would sometimes wonder if you're even playing. It's, you know, no offense to Atari people, but I mean, it's it wasn't, you know, as a three-year-old, it was really hard to grasp something like that. It wasn't until I was around five years old when the original Nintendo came out that I was just kind of, it knocked my socks off. Seeing Mario, hearing the music and the themes, the theme song and all that, it, it really hooked me as a gamer. So although I the first introduction to video games in general wasn't an Atari, it was really the Nintendo that really, really got me. It made me realize that, man, I really want to play video games. Unfortunately, I didn't hold on to any of my childhood consoles as we always had to trade in our consoles for the next big thing. So we went to our local Funko Land, EB Games, whatever you want to call it. I actually think it really was literally a Funko Land. And we traded in our childhood NES and Super Nintendo and all of our games for a PlayStation 1. And at the time, we didn't care. We thought it was amazing. You know, we got to play Metal Gear Solid. We got to play, you know, 3D fighting games. And we thought this was the future. And we were not looking back. During that time, I know that we didn't care. But, like, recently I've been thinking, you know, I want those retro consoles back. And I've been collecting over the past couple years now. And I've gotten all of the childhood retro consoles that I had growing up. And then some including things like the PC Engine and Turbo Graphics, which I didn't have, but now have 
as an adult. I will show all my retro consoles in another video. In today's age, there are so many games that are released unfinished, knowing that they'll patch it later. Uh, making the game devs feel like they're scam artists, you know, as we are paying full price for these unfinished games. You know, they, they didn't really do that back then. And actually when they did do that, like Atari did that with E.T., the E.T. game in 1982, and it damn near took down the entire video game in industry completely. It wasn't until Nintendo came in and actually started producing high quality games that that actually made a big difference. Um, and I followed a lot of the history with it as well. And Nintendo did a lot of copyright things, but it was really, I'm on the side of Nintendo for this because they were trying to ensure something like the Atari and all these video games coming out of nowhere that anybody could publish that were not of good quality couldn't just happen on the Nintendo. So that's why they copyrighted so much of their stuff was to ensure that the games were actually quality games on the Nintendo. Which is why, you know, Nintendo is really big on copyright nowadays. <laughs> that's for sure. That hasn't changed at all. Nostalgia is super powerful. But that's only one of the reasons why I still love retro gaming. Of course, when I hear the Mario theme or Sonic 2 music, it brings me back to when I was a kid playing these games. But really, it's the formulas that they developed back then that still holds true to this day. They created genres of games that are still around and we still use. 2D platformers like Mario, running gun games like Contra, there are brand new games being released today that follow this same formula. And it's no wonder that they are re-releasing these games as HD retro remakes, or even collections as many re retro games bundled together in one package. I recently bought the Camcom, Capcom Fighting Collection, which has like 22 games in it. They're re-releasing HD remakes of Donkey Kong Country that's coming back again. I mentioned it earlier that they had Super Mario Bros. RPG. They re-released that in HD, basically, on the Nintendo Switch. And these games are hits, and they're still selling. Which, in another video, I'm going to make another video that, that talks about why I think retro gaming will never die. But that's in another video. A lot of the retro games were not easy, and that's also a bad... Like, a lot of people didn't like that. You have games like, you know, Castlevania... Um, Battle Toads, all these other games that were like notoriously hard to beat. And um, I'll be honest with you, it just makes the victory that much more sweeter when you do beat these games. Um, I recently beat Castlevania and it was amazing. Yes, I had to use save states, uh, but still, it was amazing. <laughs> it was so hard. That Grim Reaper fight, the last two fights, Grim Reaper and Dracula himself, were just ridiculously hard. And that's just something to say like you could beat it when you when just with persistence in practice you could beat these games they weren't like impossible well i mean maybe some are but like you know they're not impossible to beat um and you know hard games get a bad rap as well like like the souls like games like like elden ring and all these other games they're popular to this day and they're notoriously hard games but people like me are glutton for punishment and we love these types of games <laughs> anyway really the best games were the ones that were easy to play and understand you didn't have to have like a tutorial or anything else but they were extremely hard to master so a lot of these games were just you pick them up you can start playing it's intuitive you know exactly what to do and then the level difficulty just kept spiking up the further you got into the game so, you know, that's those are just, you know, my thoughts on it. I think some people aren't made for retro gaming. They don't like these hard games and, and each to their own. Um, but I really think that was the golden age. The console wars are really the golden age of gaming. And a lot of these games that came out were going to stand the test of time and be known as these just legendary games throughout time. Like, you know, for instance, Chrono Trigger and all these other games like is Chrono Trigger ever going to be thought of as not a just amazing RPG that people still buy to this day? Like, people are buying this to this day. The game still costs a lot of money, and the price is probably going to continually go up. <laughs> so, anyway, those are my thoughts on retro gaming and why I love retro gaming. And I've, I've been probably playing more retro games lately than even 
modern games, if I'm being honest. So, anyway, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Like and subscribe and tell me what you think about retro games down below. See you guys.